I'm going to reconvene the, uh, this meeting of the Santa Rosa Board of Public Utilities. We had a rather lengthy study session on the uh, draft groundwater master plan, which is now available on the city's website for uh, public review. Before we uh, go forward with the agenda, I did want to um, ask Assistant City Attorney Rawlings uh, if you could introduce your, uh, your partner there. Thank you, Chairman Gale and members of the board. I have today my guest with me at the day is uh, Nicole Dorotinsky, who has been a research and program coordinator for the Utilities Department for seven years. Uh, during that time, she's been responsible for the uh, Aquatic Biomass to Energy Project, as you may remember, and helps coordinate the Take It from the Tap promotional program. Um, she has just completed her first year of law school at Empire College, and she is working with me under the city's um, mentoring program, the Step Right Up program, and I'm happy to have her as my guest today. Welcome. Yeah, I do remember your presentation on the uh, biomass mass project. It was an impressive project, and it's good to have you with us again. Thank you. Uh, we have um, one item we will go back to that we did not take care of prior to our study session. I'd like to ask if there are any statements of, of abstention from any board members today? Yes, I have one. But for consent item number 6.1. Okay. Or 6.1, are there any other abstentions? Okay. And Chairman Gale, just for the record, um, the reason for the abstention, I believe, is because this is a uh, union contractor and board member Stephenson has, uh, within the last 12 months, worked on the uh, union apprenticeship program for your former employer. Right. Thank you. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, our next item of business is approval of minutes from our April 4th meeting. Um, all of the uh, members were present for that meeting, so all can vote, I believe. And um, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I move we approve the minutes of the April 4th uh, meeting. Second. Moved by Board Member Holt, uh, seconded by Vice Chair Galvin. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed and abstentions, it is adopted. Thank you. Today we do have uh, one staff briefing, and um, Budget Manager Reed, uh, if you could introduce this item for us, please. Great. We have um, Teresa Gudina, a water resources analyst with our water use efficiency team, who's going to be um, talking to you about a specific um, project she took on. And go ahead, Teresa. Thank you, Linda. Um, good afternoon, uh, Chairman Gale and members of the board. Again, my name is Teresa Kadina, and I'm a water resources analyst with the Utilities Department, and I'm excited to have the opportunity to talk to you today about this project. Um, our department has been collaborating with the Univision, which is a Spanish language television network, on airing a series of four Spanish language installments that focus on Santa Rosa water. And the programs are styled as conversational interviews with Spanish-speaking utilities department staff, educating the viewers about various aspects of Santa Rosa water. Our department is taking a serious look at how we collaborate and educate our customers, specifically the Latino community, and we're thrilled when Univision approached us in December of 2012 with an interest in producing a series of short programs. Uh, again, these programs are gonna be, were aired on their newly acquired television station, Unimas, and so, but before we go into talking about uh, the programs itself, I'd like to give you a brief introduction into a new vision and the market reach that they have. So how we got here. Um, again, Univision approached us in 2012 and we began working with them um, for various reasons. One, Univision has the largest Spanish language, tele is the largest Spanish language television network in the US. Its target audience is Latin American families who reside in the US and their largest audience of Spanish speaking language television viewers um, around the world, according to the Nielsen's ratings. And also there's a high trust factor within the Latino community when they see anything in Univision. 
So with that in mind, I'd like to share with you why this project is valuable to our department. I also want to point out that one of the deal makers for us deciding to move forward with the, the, with the project is that uh, Univision offered this to us at no cost. So there was no cost for the um, programs. So I, I'd like to go ahead and share um, a little bit more about the project. Like I said, we've identified the need to inform and educate the Spanish-speaking community about the services that we provide for several reasons. Latinos are the, large, the fastest growing population nationwide in Sonoma County, which also means there are a large growing number of utility customers. In addition, um, historically, we as a department have had a difficult time attracting Spanish-speaking customers to attend our free workshops take advantage of our free incentive programs um, to reduce water consumption and to participate in environmental programs to protect our environment. And then finally, sorry about that, finally, uh, many of the Latino communities in um, our community tend to have limited disposable income. So educating these families on how to use water efficiently, uh, reduce bottled water purchase by drinking tap water, and taking advantage of our rebates and free programs will not only help them save money, but they will be contributing to protecting our water supply and the environment. There are numerous benefits for our department to decide uh, to um, reach out to our utility customers, including the potential in water savings, building a positive relationship, growing confidence with our water supply, and protecting and improving our environment. With these benefits in mind, we identify the four target areas that we wanted the Univision programs to focus on. And the first one we talked about was Santa Rosa uh, water supply. So I presented that topic and it was, that aired on March 14th. And we basically talked about um, where our water comes from and introducing the various aspects of our water supply portfolio. The second program focused on water quality and take it from the tap and making sure that um, our customers knew that our water was safe to drink. And that program was presented um, by Jose Valencia and he's a utility systems operator that aired on May 3rd. Um, so again, that really focused a lot on the water quality report and teaching our customers that our water um, exceeded all the state uh, regulations for drinking water. Um, again, we really focused on teaching our customers that water is safe to drink. One of the issues that we found in our community, if you take a look at the articles at the bottom, um, you'll see that there's, uh, uh, in this particular article, they're citing it, Teresa and not myself, but um, that in the Latino community, a lot of people come to the U.S. with, with the notion and, and the belief that tap water is not safe to drink because it is not safe to drink in their countries. So they spend a lot of money buying bottled water and don't realize that our tap water is safe to drink. So that's what this program really focused on. And then the third program uh, was focused on water use efficiency, and um, Gail Chavez, who is also here with me today, presented that program, and that aired this morning. And she uh, focused on talking about the free incentive programs and our rebate programs that we offer to our utility customers that can help them reduce water consumption and, of course, save them money as well. So that's uh, really valuable information. A lot of our customers are not aware of all the free services that we provide. And then finally, our fourth um, program, Julia Gonzalez, who's our marketing and outreach coordinator, will be presenting that and it's scheduled to air uh, in September. I don't have an exact date, but it will be airing in September. And she focused on stormwater and creeks and pollution prevention. So really teaching our customers that the only source of water allowed in the storm drain system is rainwater, and so um, the and that any pollutants such as soapy water, oil, garbage, and paint, and so forth, make their way to our water supply, and um, so teaching them not to to do that, and. Uh, Again, it, really educating the customer of with some of the best practices. So again, by teaching our customers on how to use water efficiently, value our drinking water supply, 
prevent pollution, we are ensuring a safe, reliable source of water for our current residents and our future generations. With that in mind, I thank you for the opportunity to brief you on the great things that our department is doing to collaborate and educate our community. Do you have any questions? No. Thank you. One of the issues that I, I have taken a personal involvement is um, the dental problem in the Hispanic community within the cavities with the children. And um, it, of course, we're talking uh, at the uh, uh, county level about fluoridation of the water. And those who are on the committee um, that have been dealing with that um, I believe that there's going to be some difficulty because of the Hispanic community not embracing uh, water from the tap. Right. So I'm wondering when you did do this presentation, the present, uh, is it well received and is it easy to change people's minds, change their behaviors, and how big a problem is it in the first place? In terms of the outcome of our presentation, with television and radio alike, it's very difficult to tell how, what kind of effect you've had on the audience because you don't have a way of getting feedback from them. Um, but we do really see the need to go out there and educate our customers, um, particularly in our Take It From The Tap program, which is what you're referring to. Yes. Um, Elise and Nicole have really worked very hard to um, Partner, one, we partnered up with Network for a Healthy California, and they've been at a lot of community events, such as the Cesar Chavez Fair, and other community events where you do have, um, uh, you know, your Spanish-speaking community going out there and getting a lot of that information. So we, they are getting the information about our programs and our, especially in this case, our Take It From The Tap program. Um, there is a lot of work being done in that, that sense. Super, thank you. Just uh, two things, actually. Uh, first, are these programs going to rerun, or was it a one-time? No, they are scheduled to rerun. Good. Um, we just don't know when they will be rerunning. And um, so, yes, they will be continuously aired. Has there been um, outreach so that the Spanish-speaking community knows these programs and these announcements are going to be televised, or is it just kind of hit and miss? We've done some um, just social media. Um, for for these programs, so we've done that's at the extent of what we've done with the programs. Okay. But when EVC on, like I said, it's a it's it's nationwide and locally. It serves uh, services about 12 counties, and they are continuously re-aired for the different, not only the local channels, but on a nationwide basis. And lastly, it would seem to me that um, if it's not being done, a focus really should be on the school kids so that they can take this information back to the home? Are we, are we doing programs along those lines? I know Take It to the Tap gets into this, mm -hmm. the school system, but are we, are we focusing that um, on the The Sonoma Spanish? County Water Agency does a lot of the outreach with the, with the schools for us. Is that correct, Glenn? And actually, Board Member um, Galvin, if Nicole Dortinsky, who happens to be here with me today, can probably respond to that if, you, if that's all right. Sure. sure. So as part of Take It From The Tap, we go into third and fourth grade, um, low income, <coughs> a predominantly Latino population, and we educate them about um, the benefits of taking it from tap, about our water quality, and we give them little um, Take It From The Tap stainless steel BPA-free water bottles, and the kids are ecstatic about it, and we go back and we check to see if they've been using them, and most of them have, and we do older um, groups as well, and we base it on the economics and how much money they can save as opposed to um, buying plastic water bottles, which is what they really do. Thank you. Thanks. Other question? Other questions? I do have one question. You mentioned that you were promoting this program through social media. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what vehicles within social media are you using? Facebook, so we, Twitter? Yes, we do have a Santa Rosa Water Facebook page and a, a Santa Rosa Water Twitter page as well. Very good. Seeing no other questions. Uh, Teresa and Gail, I really want to thank you for the work that you're doing, and I think this kind of outreach is very, very important, and as uh, Vice Chair Galvin was uh, indicating, keeping up the outreach and uh, attempting, this, uh, attempting to communicate clearly this message is very, very important, and I really commend you for the work you've done, and I thank you for bringing the presentation to us today. Thank you.
We have uh, two consent items today, which we will actually vote on separately because of the um, uh, recusal on 6.1. But before we do that, is there anyone who wishes to have any of the consent items pulled for further discussion? Okay, then at this point, um, we'll take them separately. Um, is there a motion to approve consent item number 6.1? Second. I'll make that motion. Okay. Moved by uh, Vice Chair Galvin and seconded by uh, Board Member Holt. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Uh, passes unanimously with uh, Abstain. Board Abstain. Member Stephenson uh, abstaining. Uh, is there a motion to approve uh, consent calendar item 6.2? I move that to we, we, uh, 6.2. Support and authorization for the Director of Utilities to serve as a member of the Association of California Water Agencies, Region 1 Board of Directors. I'll second it. Uh, moved by Board Member Carney and seconded by Board Member Stephenson. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed and abstentions. That item uh, passes. Thank you. Uh, we do have one report item today. And um, Budget Manager Reed, if you could introduce the item. Okay, uh, Deputy Director Glenn Wright, um, Deputy Director of Water Resources, will um, present a recommendation that the city approve a resolution in support of participation in the Water Bond Coalition. Good afternoon, uh, Chairman Gale and members of the board. Um, this is actually a pretty straightforward item. I actually considered just having it go on send. It seemed like such a no-brainer to, to me, but uh, this action is requesting that the BPU uh, recommend to the City Council that they approve a resolution in support of the City's participation in the uh, State Water Bond Coalition process. I have some uh, notes here about some history of this process. But essentially what we're talking about is the potential of a bond uh, being negotiated by our legislature of about 10 point, I think it's 10.14 billion dollars. Uh, and the emphasis of water in California largely is on the California water projects. Uh, and oftentimes uh, the counties like Sonoma counties that aren't really part of the Delta process are forgotten or don't have the horsepower to really get a, a big piece of this uh, legislation. Uh, so in 2002, uh, the city of Santa Rosa did participate in a similar water bond coalition. Uh, this was of the northern and coastal California communities. These are the communities that aren't specifically delta-oriented communities, although some of them do get a state water. Uh, the coalition uh, advocated uh, to, uh, for the local water projects to be included in the, in the bond issue. Uh, and then in 2002, uh, Prop 50 was passed by the voters. Uh, Prop 50 was a 3.4 uh, billion dollar uh, proposition. Uh, and uh, it, it, it integrated into that bond process uh, funds for integrated regional water management uh, programs. And the city of Santa Rosa is in one of these programs in the North Coast Integrated Regional Water management program. So then in 2006, uh, the legislator, uh, the voters uh, voted on what was then called Proposition 84. Uh, Proposition 84 was a $5.4 billion uh, bond issuance. Uh, again, uh, our, our local, we call it the NC, North Coast, well I can't even say, I can't even say the acronyms, North Coast Integrated Regional Water Management Program, uh, uh, did uh, receive money from that also, which we're a member of. So then in 2009, um, during the drought, uh, the governor signed into legislation uh, in special session, SBX7, uh, into law, and among other things, uh, this legislation included SBX7-2, uh, which was the 11.14 uh, .14 billion dollar uh, bond sale to fund statewide water and water-related environmental projects. Uh, this uh, legislation also included two other pieces of legislation that we've discussed many times. Um, most board members are familiar with SBX7-6 
which is the CASGEM, uh, the uh, California Statewide uh, uh, Evaluation Monitoring Program, which we just discussed in our study session, and then also uh, SBX 7-7, which was uh, water savings, the 20% water savings by 2020. So this was a component of that legislation. As I pointed out, uh, this was $11.1 uh, billion. Uh, originally, the uh, bond was uh, planned to go to the voters in 2010. Uh, as you recall, we were in dire economic needs in, in, in the state at that time. Uh, the legislature did not believe that the bond would go with a favorable rating at that time, so they pushed it to 2012. Uh, and then subsequently, in, uh, they then pushed it now to 2014. Uh, since that time, um, the legislature is considering reconfiguring this bond. Uh, there's, uh, of course, I guess the main thing is that the thought is that it's a large bond. As you can see from the other two bonds just sold, this is like double uh, Prop 84, which was larger than, than Prop 50. So they want to do, what they want to do is reduce the uh, amount of the bond, thinking it's be more palatable for um, uh, the voters. And of course, what everybody says is, go ahead and cut the bond, but don't cut my portion of the bond, cut somebody else's portion of the bond. And for that reason, it's very important uh, that the city of Santa Rosa gets a seat, albeit very small, at the table for these bond negotiations. Um, Simultaneously, uh, with the uh, uh, Water Bond Coalition, Aqua is representing uh, the city of Santa Rosa, uh, as a, and uh, Jennifer Burke is, of course, currently sitting on the uh, Aqua board at this time, and is involved with the various discussions on the, on the bond. Uh, so she could actually give us a report, possibly, on what's going on with Aqua's position on the bond, if you would care to hear about that. Um, but at any rate, uh, so basically, in a nutshell, uh, to help us have a seat at the table and to have our city's input, the Utilities Department is recommending that you move this resolution on to the City Council for their approval. And again, what this, um, uh, this resolution does is it gets us into the con coalition, and the coalition then will have two or three hundred resolutions from different districts and cities and municipal organizations as a support. And also it recognizes uh, the utilities director and the mayor uh, that can speak on behalf of the city of Santa Rosa with respect to this, the bond um, coalition. I'll be happy to answer any questions I can. Great. Uh, does joining this obligate us to accept whatever bonds, uh, bond, the interest rates on any bonds that they come out with, uh, compared to the city getting a better rate on its own? Yeah, I don't believe we have a whole lot of control over that kind of a, of a thing. This, I think, only gives us some input input of what f uh, facilities the bond money will be utilized for. Right, but uh, let's say that uh, the uh, that we do uh, get some money set aside by this. Uh, uh, cooperative bond issue, uh, and uh, we could get a better rate on our own. Can we pass it up? No, I, th I think this is state legislation. Uh, I think we're the state. So I'm not an expert on this, but I believe that this will be voted by the voters, and that uh, we, yeah, we can't. I think we're going to have to go so, with what we so get. Once, once we're in, we're stuck. I think well, yeah. I think that's once the legislation, once the legislature acted, we were stuck. And I think actually, I would ask our assistant city attorney. I for was going to mention that Jennifer Burke's coming down, but also Perfect. basically that this the state will be selling and floating the bonds, and uh, we will perhaps get a share of them, perhaps not. But we're not talking about a loan per se here. We'd be talking about an actual, basically, uh, a grant of funds to us that is not a loan. We wouldn't be paying any interest on it in addition to the interest that our, uh, our uh, voter electorate is already paying on the bonds. Yeah, I, um, good afternoon again, Chairman Gale and members of the board. Just to confirm, what this would do is the bond, if passed, would then provide grant opportunities that we could compete for, both potentially statewide through funding grants for recycled water programs and for water conservation programs, and then also compete for through the IRWMPs. Um, particularly we're in the North Coast IRWMP, and so it would have potential pockets of money that would go to those IRWMPs, and then we'd compete for that grant funding. 
So similarly, we competed for um, North Coast IRWMP funds back a number of years ago when Prop 50 was available, and that's how we got our grant for the Recycled Water Program. So how are these bonds going to be repaid? Again, they would be sold by the state and they would be repaid to the state. So it's just, it's a funding mechanism for grant opportunities that would be issued from state agencies and then we'd be competing for those grants. So we don't really have an input on the bond per se. That's completely done by the legislature and the state. Yeah, so they'd, they'd be repaid uh, through the state general fund then probably. The general obligation. Correct. Yeah, okay. Thank you. That reassures me. George, yeah, is there any cost to join this coalition, or is it just by just presenting the? Uh, no, no, there's no cost um, except for uh, time spent by staff, uh, you know, meeting and negotiating and things like that. But there's no fee. Okay. Other questions? Yeah, we're uh, essentially what we're doing here, as I understand it, is we're um, reconstituting our membership in a uh, group that was originally formed to try and make sure that the Northern California counties um, and agencies received their fair share of those state funds. And it appears that this is the same uh, reason for joining at this time. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? Um, is there a motion uh, concerning this report item? I actually have a resolution before you to make a recommendation to the council. Okay. Um, it's a resolution with a very long title. Is there someone who would uh, like to move approval of that resolution? I'll move approval of the resolution of the Board of Public Utilities recommending that the City Council agree to participate in the Water Bond Coalition, support the activities of the coalition, endorse efforts of the coalition to develop the fair and equitable distribution of state water bond funds, for projects that will benefit the City of Santa Rosa and other entities throughout Northern and Coastal California, and designate the Director of Utilities as the official representative for the City to the Water Bond Coalition and waive the rest of the text. Second. Uh, moved by Vice Chair Galvin and seconded by Board Member Carney. All those in favor of the resolution, please say aye. 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 No, and abstentions. Passes unanimously. Uh, at this point, I believe we have a report, a water supply update. Would you like to introduce again, uh, Linda? Uh, Deputy Director, uh, Water Resources, Glenn Wright, will again um, deliver the water supply update. <coughs> and um, Deputy Director, um, Subregional Operations, Mike Prince, will join him at the end for the um, Subregional Water Supply Update. Okay. And Gina, can you uh, turn on my overhead here? Now, what is that? Well, that's your buttons. <laughs> oh, here you go. Oops, upside down. This is that technology. You actually have to put something in front of the, the camera. That old technology. Okay, is that clear? That's, that's clear over there, then. It's there. But they want to see the graph, though. Okay, good afternoon, Chairman Gale, Gale and members of the board again. Um, so uh, it's not that the BPU isn't important, but this whole presentation is based around the last BPU um, meeting. And the reason why that date is so important was that was also the date that the uh, uh, temporary urgencies change uh, order came out from the state. So everything is uh, in my presentation today is gonna be based on um, May 16th. So when I was here exactly, uh, whenever that was, three weeks ago, we were talking about this very order. And uh, some interesting things have occurred. I, I sent you these in advance, uh, so most of you have seen them. Um, but what you can see very clearly fr from this picture is that by um, reducing the flows out of uh, Lake Mendocino, we have uh, more or less stopped the bleeding uh, in the, uh, in the uh, storage of Lake Mendocino. So today, uh, Lake Mendocino is, uh, at least this morning it was, at 59,587 acre feet. That's uh, 
53.7 of the, what I call the summertime water supply pool. That's 85% of what I call the wintertime or 70,000 acre foot water supply pool. And uh, it is 48.6% uh, uh, of the total. Now, this is what gets more interesting about the story. Currently, um, right now, they're releasing 100 cubic feet, I mean, uh, cubic feet per second out of the, uh, out of the um, reservoir. So when, when they actually reduced the flows uh, out of the, uh, Lake Mendocino to 75 cubic feet per second, that really means not at the dam, that means at the gauge at the confluence of Dry Creek and the Russian River. So right at that confluence, before Dry Creek water comes in, they have a gauge there and they have that set for 75 cubic feet per second. And that's where, that's, of course, the, the problem they have is um, there's a long way between the dam and the confluence of Dry Creek. I think it even takes a couple of days for the water to get down there. So it's a little complicated to exactly determine how much water to release from the dam. So that's why the release now is at about 100, or it's been ranging between in the 90s and the early 100s. Um, and the inflow right now, today, is, uh, is under 100. It's ranging in the 90s to maybe 100 right now. So since that day of May 16th, uh, we have actually gained 303 acre feet in the reservoir. So you can see on, on May 16th, we're at uh, 59,284, and today we are at 59,587. We actually hit a high point right here of 59,810 acre feet. And that's an interesting story. Uh, why, what, what's happening? Why did it hit a high point and now we're back on the decline? We're no longer gaining in the reservoir. <clears throat> and the answer is that um, our water comes from uh, some of the water that refills uh, Lake Mendocino comes down the East Fork of the Russian River, but first it goes down the Eel River and passes through. So uh, until um, June 1st, uh, Lake Pillsbury was considered in a normal state. They're regulated by the federal uh, energy, the, the FERC, federal energy, I can never get the words right, but anyway, the, the FERC license. And the, anyway, on uh, June 1st, according to the FERC permit, they went to a dry condition. And that f forced the uh, uh, pg and &E to reduce the flows through the tunnel by 35 cubic feet per second. So uh, we were at one point receiving uh, as much as 100 uh, and 30 cubic feet per second through the tunnel, and now we're in the uh, 90s. So that is why Lake Mendocino now is no longer gaining, but it is in declining. So uh, since uh, June 2nd, which is, and actually it occurred at midnight on June 2nd, or June 1st, so almost, just barely June 2nd, uh, we have lost 223 acre feet uh, from Lake Sonoma. That's basically 55 acre feet a day is the rate it's going down. So if you figure it was actually five days, not four days, it's actually 44 acre feet um, uh, per day. So the, what the agency is t telling me is they expect that the, the uh, Lake Mendocino is going to drop at a rate of 30 to 40 acre feet uh, per day. So it's in a definitely declining state. So from now on in, uh, this summer anyway, I'm going to be showing you this chart a lot. So this chart is the chart that's in the very last page of the order. And, and uh, what you see there, of course, is the water supply pool on the top, that big 
uh, thing on the top. The dark black line is the actual surface, uh, is the capacity of, of currently of, uh, of Lake Mendocino, and the dotted line is the proposed, uh, uh, they call it the, the critical storage curve line. And what, what was so critical about this is that uh, what the permit says is, should the uh, storage in Lake Mendocino drop below the critical storage curve for more than three days, then they will reduce the flows uh, to 35 cubic feet per second at the confluence of the Russian River and Dry Creek, and the flows in the lower river will go to 50 cubic feet per second. So, those, so this, this is something we're gonna watch very closely. But fortunately for us, during this period of time of May 16th till now, we've actually uh, have created a, a 1,700 acre foot buffer in uh, between, there's that little tiny piece right there, you can barely see it, and I'm not sure how accurate anything is here, but according to the water agency, that's 1,700 acre feet. We have, so we have a buffer of 1,700 acre feet, and also the lake storage is declining. So we believe we'll be able to stay above the curve. Uh, but the problem that we're having is that um, the agency, as part of their permit, is told to negotiate with communities in the upper river, which they have actually no jurisdiction over. So uh, if you notice, I think, I read the paper the other day that Cloverdale is gonna have a 20% reduction in water use. And so we need to have other communities in the upper river uh, follow suit with that. So uh, it's really an issue in the upper river to uh, keep this, this curve uh, above the critical storage curves. So that's, this is the story that we're gonna be following closely over the next uh, few months. So the next uh, item is Lake Sonoma. <clears throat> so it looks like we're following right exactly on 2010. Uh, Lake, Lake Sonoma has um, 222,259 acre feet of water in it. According to the water supply pool of 245,000 acre feet, that's 90% uh, full. Uh, it is essentially, it's got 58% of the total capacity uh, and the release is right in line with the biological opinions of about 105 cubic feet per second. And there is some inflow. There actually shows some inflow of around five, acre, uh, five cubic feet per second. So a little bit of water is coming in or how they figure that out, I don't know. Uh, so that's what's, so there's still a lot of water uh, up in Lake Pillsbury. My neighbor went up there water skiing and it was packed and everything was normal. Lake Pillsbury, uh, and this is our problem. It continues to go down as you can see. Uh, right now Lake Pillsbury is at 47,988. Uh, acre feet of water, that's 55% uh, full. And the outflow uh, is 141 cubic feet per second. And I believe it was closer to 190 when I was here last on May 16th. So they reduced the flows out of uh, Lake Pillsbury. Traveling down to uh, Van Arsdale, um, uh, at Van, Van Arsdale, uh, 52 uh, cubic feet per second is going down the eel and 95 is going through the tunnel to Potter Valley. One thing also I didn't realize is that the uh, Potter Valley Irrigation Districts actually has water rights uh, for 50 uh, cubic feet per second. Although typically they've never actually used more than 19. So, uh, but, Anyway, that's just sort of an interesting side, side effect. The, the water they don't use continues on down to Lake Mendocino. And lastly, at Hacienda, uh, the flows are right at the bio, biological opinion number of 85 uh, cubic feet per second right now. So it's pretty much right on. So that's uh, the activities of our rivers and reservoirs at, as of today. Uh, one last thing I wanna mention is that the uh, Water contractors and the agency have uh, embarked on this 20 gallon challenge. 
Uh, and essentially what this is, is you go, I, I went onto their website, you can go to the agency website and it's right there, a big blast and you can sign on to it. And what you do is you sign up to save water uh, through using, um, uh, not using your toilet as a waste basket, for example, shortening your showers, turn off the water while brushing your teeth. You can, you can, uh, you can pledge to do all these various things and then you can be put in a contest. Unfortunately, it turns out, because many of our, uh, some of our employees pledged, and it turns out, uh-uh, they can't get in the contest. You, you cannot be a contractor to win. So I don't, I thought probably, for, I imagine board members are the same. Uh, so the idea is to have people pledge uh, and have a lot of outreach around this 20 gallon uh, per person um, reduction. And it, it works out pretty well for us because uh, what happens is as people sign up, then we will get their uh, contact information and then the people that are within our service area, we will then contact and uh, offer them rebates and audits and, and, our, and our services uh, to try and reduce the uh, water impacts in our service area. So, so it's, it, it's a good outreach tool for our uh, water resources group. Uh, and I think that's about all I have to report. I, I got the email about the, the challenge, and, but as I listen to you, and, and there's there's a flow that's being released from each of these these points. How does this may seem a stupid question, but how does the citizenry cutting back interrelate with the amount that comes down the river? I I, I don't okay. get the I don't get the the nexus. Well. You're right, the, the, the major problem we're, we're having right now is actually in the upper river and not directly with us. Um, the, uh, the 20 gallon challenge is a Russian river watershed wide challenge. So there are water agencies offering that, people, that to people in Ukiah and Cloverdale, anywhere in the Russian river watershed. So those people will, are benefiting from that challenge also. So there's one little bit of water. Also, the other thing is as uh, less water is released from the upper river, uh, less water goes to the lower river. So obviously the less, the more we conserve, the less water goes to the lower river. So it's a benefit for them also. So um, the thing is what's, what people forget uh, is that we're all connected. We're connected to the people in the upper river, the lower river, the water users, the ag culture. It's not one person. It, it's just unfortunate in this situation, we're the only person that, that's got a hook in us uh, by the state. Okay, thank you. And so I have one other question. You said that the flow out of Lake Sonoma down Dry Creek is at 105? 105, yes. And that is the, that's limited by the biological opinion? Well, it is, uh, that is what the biological opinion wants us to be at, but we have the option in drier periods, and the, and the water agency may use this, that they can actually increase that. So if they're forced to reduce flows out of uh, the upper river, they can actually have, they have what I call them chits, or one opportunities, they have five opportunities to raise it to 125 cubic feet per second. And they have like three opportunities to raise it to 145, and they can actually raise it as high as 165 one time, and that's in 15 years. And so they obviously want to reserve those for when they really need those opportunities. So um, anyway, that's, right, right now we're, we're in sync, everything is within spec as far as. What was the release down Dry Creek prior to the biological opinion? You know, I'm, I'm not, I can't recall, but I'm thinking it's, it was probably around 160. Okay, okay, thank you. Len? Uh, uh, la last session, why I asked, uh, is there any reason uh, for us to uh, uh, ask our uh, users to uh, voluntarily uh, cut back on water within the city, or do you think the water agency 20 gallon plan is sufficient? Well, you know, we, we actually never let up in our city. We're always asking our uh, water users to, to use water efficiently. We, um, we still uh, tag people for water wasting. We're out there doing audits every day. Uh, and although we haven't specifically put a number on a, on a you know, voluntary reduction, um, we're very, uh, you know, we're, we're always encouraging our customers to use water efficiently. So that, that message has never changed even when we have 
full there, reservoirs. Yeah. Is there any reason for us to uh, uh, promote on the city website or otherwise uh, the turf time number or well, remind the, people that they can access that for their irrigation? Well, all that information is on our, our city okay. website. All of our programs, turf time, it's, if you flip it up, I don't... So, so there's no reason to give it special emphasis right now? Yeah, yeah, it's the only thing we could do is highlight it, I suppose, is on our city. The first page you enter is srcity.org, and we, again, we could direct them to, to the, the water conservation. That might be a good idea to do. I would, I think so. Yeah, I actually went and took the challenge over the weekend, um, and I think the website that the, the agency put up was a pretty good tool to increase awareness, um, but as Board Member Holt is suggesting, if we can look at ways to increase the visibility here locally, I think that would be a useful useful thing. And um, you know, one of the things they did when they uh, put the website up, they make very very specific recommendations. If you reduce reduce your shower by thirty seconds, you're going to save so many gallons. Now I want to. Uh, I know that it was something that was done. I believe through the partnership that we are part of. Yes. Um, I, th I, I think that kind of approach in the future is a good one to, uh, to continue to use. Those very, very discreet actions that a person can actually think about and commit to, to taking can make a huge difference. Um, and if we can increase the visibility on our own websites, I think that's a good thing as well. The, the other thing that I would suggest, if you have the ability to give feedback, um, all the members of the partnership Let's, let's try and make sure that all of our logos are actually on anything that gets posted because I don't believe that the City of Santa Rosa's partici participation might be uh, as noted as the water agency and the way it's presented. So if you could take a look at that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman Gale, members of the board, um, if Glenn's report was on the upstream water storage, my report is on the downstream water storage. Uh, basically, these are plots of the reclaimed, cumulative reclaimed water storage volume that we have in, I think it's 11 reclaimed water storage ponds in the sub-regional system. Um, when I was here last, and I can actually talk a little bit about some features of the, uh, the chart. Maximum storage capacity is basically the hydraulic maximum storage, cumulative storage of all of our ponds combined. Uh, the orange line and the yellow line comprise the operating envelope that we try to stay within. And there are three full years, 2004, 2007, and 2000. Five, which are considered um, minimum, average, and maximum storage curves that we compare the current year to uh, every, every year. Um, when I was last in front of the board discussing this, we were somewhere around the peak, and it was a pretty easy prediction to make, and I was right, that was the peak. We, we peaked out at uh, right around 1.3 billion gallons of storage, and that was it, and today we're just, we're right at a little over one billion gallons. Um, we have not had to discharge any flow at all this year. Um, discharges are visible on other years, for example, in 2005, when the storage trend increases steeply enough, we have to prepare to stay within our operating volume or operating uh, envelope and a discharge shows up as a significant drop in volume and you won't see that in this year's trend um, and it's a predictive thing we don't always know how the balance of a winter is going to turn out so there some years we may have regretted discharging not knowing that we weren't going to be getting a lot of rain subsequent to that point but anyway um, don't need to say very much pretty straightforward update but we are uh, below our minimum operating level um, I predicted that we would be, although we're not as low as we have been in the past, and the real pinch will come later in the season when we get out into August and September when our storage volumes are, are the lowest that they will be. One of the biggest challenges then is water quality. Um, you can get more algae growth in, in the water storage um, 
ponds at that time because of the minimum volumes that are stored. So that's just a quick update, uh, short and sweet, and be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Hmm? Uh, my assumption is that uh, we would, uh, if you want to get back to that minimum uh, edge of the envelope, uh, why uh, would you, uh, do you feel that the, which way would we go? Would we reduce, uh, ask our recycled water irrigators uh, the farms and others to uh, reduce their use, or would we reduce pumpage to the geysers? Um, we're under contract to deliver a certain amount to the geysers, and that's, uh, you could say that's an interruptible supply, but we don't look at that as an option, generally speaking. Um, uh, the agricultural supply is what's considered an interruptible supply, and I believe Randy Piazza, who actually operates the reclamation system, has already notified the, the farmers that there may be allocations that we would use. Um, we wouldn't normally at this time of the year make significant adjustments to try and get back within the operating envelope. Um, that is something that we would start to do more towards July, August, September um, through allocations to the agricultural uh, reuse customers that we have. A few years ago, I think we cut them off, didn't we? Maybe I'm not sure about that. Except for the turf farm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Jennifer may know, actually. We did allocations. That's basically what we would we would do first is basically limit their use but not cut them off. Okay. And and it, our reclaimed water is very much a commodity to uh, the agricultural users and they, they have a lot of concern when they see the trends looking the way they are because it can really affect them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, this is our time for public comments. Seeing no members of the public present, we'll move on to referrals. I believe we have no referrals. Um, are there any uh, written communications? I believe there are none at this time. Um, are there any subcommittee reports? The contract subcommittee met earlier this week, and it looks like we'll have one more meeting uh, before any items come before the board. Okay. Uh, are there any board member reports? Uh, director's report. Thank you, Chairman Gale. Um, I have a couple things I did want to mention. Um, we're in a pretty much continuous recruitment process right now. Um, we had a couple of retirements in May, and the way it's looking, we're going to continue to have retirements throughout the year, as well as staff moving on or, and up. So um, we're recruiting for, interviewing for water use efficiency manager and instrumentation technician, wastewater operator trainee, our two deputy director that we have in acting positions, of course, and about six interns that um, we have acting college students who come in and help us out um, and get credit and, you know, so that's been a lot of um, change and ongoing stuff and getting new faces in, so that's good. The budget hearings, the, where the council will consider our budget appropriation request will be starting June 18th, and then they're gonna carry over to the 19th and possibly the 20th. So uh, because of that, the BPU meeting on the 20th will be held at the utilities field office in room M, um, just in case the council is still in the chambers um, at that time. Um, I wanted to let you know that the Sonoma County Water Agency is replacing an aqueduct at the turnout at Jenner Ave at the railroad tracks this week um, and fixing a butterfly um, valve on the aqueduct. So they're continuing work within our um, aqueduct to make sure that the water is, that everything is being up to date. Our own CIP, um, we're almost done on Montgomery Drive. For those of you who um, frequent that area, that's nice to see. They're starting to do the um, striping. Um, but they are starting um, the Montgomery Village North area um, construction. So there is some night work at Farmers Lane in Montgomery Village. And we do have a website, www srcity.org backslash MB area and any residents that want to know when we're begun to be doing night work um, that is posted on that website all of the projects in the Montgomery Village area 
Um, we're also going to be starting the Slater Street sewer um, between College and Benton this month. And then finally, I just wanted to mention that if you haven't been to Municipal Services Center South recently, um, there's a lot of changes going on. The entire CIP teams are moving over from leased space into the, um, the MSC South area. Um, every day that you walk in, there are new cubicles and people working very hard. Um, amazing coordination by the city's facilities planning coordinator, Cameron McDonald, and we've got our own electrical crews and then hired um, office furniture people there every day, um, and it, they're just putting it up like crazy. So that will be saving us that least office space um, over across the street from where they're moving into. Very good. As we end our meeting today, I wanted to take a minute to reflect on the work that we do here on the Board of Public Utilities and the other boards and commissions where private citizens freely give their time to help maintain the community and to build a better community that we live in. It's no small thing. It takes significant commitments of time and sometimes that's too easily taken for granted. Uh, while doing the uh, voluntary work in public service that the folks on this board do is an essential part of building our future here in Santa Rosa and Sonoma County. Uh, this morning I was reflecting on the commitment that all of you have shown and remembering a small quote from Robert Kennedy who said, the future is not a gift, it is an achievement. Sometimes public meetings are adjourned in the memory of someone and today is the 45th anniversary of the death of Robert Kennedy. So today I'm going to adjourn our meeting in his memory and I also wanted in to honor the spirit of public service that his life inspired in many and that continues in the dedication that is shown by the members of this board and other boards and commissions. And I thank you for being here today. And with that, the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>